So this is a function, and this is its inverse, right? Do you remember what the inverse of a function is? It's a reflection over this line. So if you have a point uh, right here on the original function, where's the point that kind of corresponds to that? That one, right? The x and y values switch. So if we have the derivative here of the function, which, no, that's not what we want, not a point there. The program would be, okay, so there's the derivative at that point that I just showed you, right? What, what is the derivative, this is, this is the derivative of this function at one, right? Okay, it looks like it's three, right? Now you can see it over here, even though it doesn't show in the picture. The, the slope of this is 3. When I reflect that line down here, is it going to still have a slope of 3? No, it's going to be negative no. one third. It's not going to be negative one third because it's going up to the right here, right? One third. One third. One third. The slope of this is one third. The slope of this is 3. Okay? Are they at the same value? Are they, guys? Are they at the same x value? No. They're not, right? If this point is called a, b here, the slope of f of x at a is the reciprocal of the slope of its inverse at b, right? Or at the function value here. This is a, this is f of a. It, this is its, this is its, uh, the reciprocal, right? I think I made it so this can move here. No, I didn't. Maybe I did. Um, I didn't. Maybe I made it so this one moves. Yeah, I made it so this moves. Okay? The reciprocal, and then when that one's zero, this one's undefined. Okay, you see down in the in the window at the side, it says undefined. And down here, it's going gonna, it's gonna to have problems as soon as I... No, it doesn't, I guess. Okay? This one disappears because it's undefined. The derivative of the, the equations over here, the two slopes, those are reciprocals of each other, the slopes of the two lines. It isn't at the same x value, right? One, you, you know, one is at this point, the other one's at its corresponding point, 3.02. So if we're, trying to, if we're trying to summarize this here, if you have this function, f of x, if there's a certain point on there like this, this is the function that we just looked at. So can you put something in your own words there that explains what was happening there and draw a picture of it for yourself in your notes? Draw a picture that explains what's happening here and then we're going to try and think about this. I will pause this again. Got to remind me. It's okay. You have the derivative of the original function at this x value here, 1. You have the derivative of the inverse function, this is its inverse, at 2. Because that point corresponds to that point. Those two are reciprocals of each other. If you're measuring the rate of change of one of them here, right, and you're sort of getting change in, change in y over change in x, when you do the reciprocal, it's going to be change in x over change in y, sort of. Like, it's going to be the, the, the change in y over here is going, to be re, is going to be whatever the change in x was over here. You're, you're kind of doing the reciprocal of the, of the slope because the, you know, the change in each one flips over there when you switch x and y, right? The, when you take a function, it's, do it's, uh, it's inverse, you switch x and y, it's the same thing with your, with your derivative dy dx, you end up looking at the change the other way around. It's hard when you start writing the symbols for it here. The derivative, the derivative of f evaluated at 1, and we have the derivative of f inverse evaluated at 2. <coughs> How are those related? They, are they equal? They're, they're reciprocals, right? So one over this, or you could say one over this. Okay? 
one divided by one of them equals the other one. I, th I really think the, the notation here gets people lost on, you know, F inverse and stuff, but it geometrically, when you look at the graph, it makes sense why they're reciprocals of each other. And then the other problem is it doesn't work nicely that these values are the same. This has to be the, oops, this has to be the points that correspond to each other. One and two is a point, you know, one, two, two, one. Now the other way that they could say this is instead, instead of saying this is two, they could say that this is f of one. So that makes it look even more complicated if instead of two there, it says f of one, right? Because two is f of one. Okay, so we're going to take it one step further and say one over df dx at one is equal to df inverse dx at f of one. Oh my. And we're going to take it one step further than that and say, what if it was a generic thing here and we said at the point A, then this is going to be F of A. Is the reciprocal of this? Yeah, you could put... You could do this. Oh, I see what you're saying. You could say A over here. This would be F inverse of A? Yeah. You could. But let's uh, let's not for right now. But you could, absolutely, right? No, he's, he's trying to understand it. Questions are good, right? You do? I think you're you're gonna have lots of time. Just just two more minutes here. And you're okay. See? You only got three minutes left in this. Uh, now, I wrote this little box here, and I don't know if you can fit it in there, but the derivative of the inverse at x, the derivative of the inverse at x, um, which I guess I'm doing it the way you just said it, eh, when I write it out there, at, at that value. I, I, we're not going to do too much with this other than I want you to understand that relationship, but we're not going to do a whole lot with it. The reason that the only time you would need to know this is if you have a function where you need to work with the inverse, but the inverse is difficult to isolate y. Okay? Like this one. The inverse of that is not one that it's easy to work with here. If you find, if you want to know the inverse of this, actually before we write any kind of formula here, it would be better to try with this specific function before we try and write it in general. If you take that function, you want to find the, end, the inverse of this. Think of this as a y and switch x and y, right? x equals y to the third plus y squared plus 1. It's, you can't isolate y there, right? So you can't write it as f inverse of x equals something. But you can you can understand the relationship of the two here. If you want f inverse or sorry, if you want f of one here, take the original function and plug it in. If we want the derivative of f prime at evaluated at three. We want the sorry, we want the derivative of f inverse at three. What can we use to do this? Because we could go through and find it implicitly, right? You could find the derivative of this implicitly. Like this is the inverse, even though it's not a function. That's the inverse. The so let's say, yeah, the, the long way is to do this, right? The long way is to do implicit differentiation on that and isolate dy dx, right? Okay, so the long way is implicit and then isolate dy dx and then evaluate it at 3. The shortcut would be if we uh, have already done this because this is a much easier derivative to find. If we know that the point 
if we know that the point 1, 3 is on the original function, then 3, 1 is on the inverse. 3, 1 should be on this. If we want the derivative at 3, it is going to be 1 over, what's it going to be? 1 over f prime at 1. Okay? That's the short way. You don't, you don't necessarily need the shortcut, but it's one of the things that's in here and that you can